Before we get into this video, I'd like to thank EA and Cold Masters for giving me access to this game so that I can showcase it to you guys. What's happening guys? As we get closer to the full release of F122 in just a couple of weeks time, we, the content creators, have been given a different build of the game so that we can showcase more of what's to come. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing just that. From the supercars and what you can do with them in game, to the new track layouts, to F1 Life and what that's about. Make sure to tune in until the end so that you guys are getting all the details on what's coming in the next couple of weeks. And lastly, make sure to head over to Next Level Racing. If you're looking to get a cockpit for F122, they supply some of the best cockpits on the market. Okay, so first thing is first i'd like to cover one of the more confusing new features that's come into the game for some people and that is the supercars now what will you actually be able to do with the supercars and how do they impact the game well from what i understand and have experienced there's only two ways that you can actually experience the supercars in f122 and the first of those two ways is by doing the new pirelli hot lap challenges where you can actually use a few different cars to do some challenges such as the checkpoint challenges average speed zones autocross challenges time attacks and drifting challenges for example the average speed zone challenge pretty self-explanatory but what you'll have to do is achieve a certain average speed throughout a sector on any specific track in any specific condition on whatever car that they choose to do it on. And the second way that you can actually use the supercars is through career mode. I'm pretty sure it's very similar to, or exactly the same as the Pirelli hot lap challenges, just thrown into career mode in between Grand Prix weekends. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think the two ways that you can actually unlock different cars are by paying for them using pit coins. Not 100% sure on that one, but the second one I am 100% on, you have to get super tokens, which can be earned by doing milestones to unlock different cars, such as the McLaren 720S or the Mercedes slash Aston Martin safety cars. Next up is my team. Now my team is pretty similar to last year's game, but with an additional change coming in. And that additional change is you're actually going to be able to choose a starting budget for your team depending on where you want to start out. Now the newcomer starting budget is pretty much what we've all been used to so far since F1 2020 when this feature was brought in where you will start with pretty much nothing and you'll have to work your way up to building a Formula 1 team to the best of its abilities from the ground up. To be honest, I see most content creators and most players who want a challenge starting with this one versus the other two. And speaking of the other two, you have Challenger, which will give you a budget that rivals some of the midfield teams. And then you have Front Runner, which, well, does what it says on the tin and gives you the budget of a front running team like Red Bull or Ferrari. Next up is track changes. Now, there's not really been a lot of emphasis on the track changes because a lot of them are quite subtle. But as soon as you pick up the game, whether that's on the 28th or the 1st of July, you guys are pretty much going to notice them instantly. And so far in this build of the game, we have every single track that we'll be racing at on this year's calendar. The only tracks that should be in the final release that we don't have access to right now, I believe, is Portimao and China. And on some of those tracks, there's been a few small details, as I said before, that I have personally noticed. For example, Monaco seems to have more bumps around the track and you can just feel the track a little bit more. I mean, this could be to do with the physics of the game rather than them changing the bumps but as you can see from the footage that i'll be showing right about now on monaco it just looks and feels different and i can say that some of the other creators that i've talked to have also said the same thing however there's one track in particular that i instantly noticed quite a few changes on and that track is actually Jeddah. now when it comes to f1 2021 we all know some of the complaints about Jeddah, how you can use a lot more of the curbs than uh, some other tracks and how the track just generally flowed and i must say that the track feels so much better in f122 and they've actually improved the track limits around the track though once again i must mention this is not a final version of the build so the final release might be a little bit different to what you're seeing here and now we have the big three we all know that australia Spain and Abu Dhabi have had some rework done to it and that's going to be reflected in F122 where all of those changes 
have been made and i must say all three tracks are pretty fun to drive okay so for this next one i know that a lot of other content creators sort of covered it with the miami build that we had a couple weeks ago but if for some reason you still don't know vr is coming to the pc version of f122 now i don't have a vr headset personally but for those who do or are looking to get one for f122 here are some of the supported headsets listed so far so we have the Valve Index, the Oculus Quest 2 plus the link cable, the Oculus Rift S, the HTC Vive and the HTC Vive Cosmos. There will probably be some sort of extra information in the description below if there are any more VR headsets that get updated and are compatible with the game. Okay, so the next one is, well, F1 Life. What is it? How does it actually impact the game? And should they have focused on putting this in the game? Well, to be honest, I wasn't actually sure about F1 Life when I first heard it in the presentation that we had for content creators, but I've since come around to it. I don't mind a feature like this. I embrace a feature like this as long as the core parts of the game, like the car physics, the tracks, and just the general feel of driving a Formula One car is continually improved and focused on. Now for what F1 Life actually is, F1 Life is basically going to be a social hub where you can show off your collection of supercars, fashions and trophies it's basically going to be a mini area for you to show off some of the things that you've either collected or bought using bitcoins and from what's been mentioned by cold masters this will also serve as the multiplayer lobby so that you will actually be able to see other people's stuff whilst you're sitting waiting for a race but as i mentioned as long as the core parts of the game is constantly being improved upon then i'm pretty much pleased and that's what we're going to be talking about right now the cars have been reworked to reflect real life, of course, but what has been changed and how does it affect you, the player? Well, first off, the suspension has been updated, making curbs a lot more different to use. Not more difficult necessarily, just different. We are used to aggressively using the curbs and that hasn't really changed in some of the cases, but in most cases, we will need to sort of relearn how to use different types of curbs on the game. We might not be able to take as much of the curbs as we have been on F1 2021, for example. The suspension has also affected the bump stop, which will also affect how the cars bottom out. And for those who don't understand what bottoming out means, it means when the floor of the car comes into contact with the tarmac or a curb. Setup changes have been made, of course, as well. We now have 51 different wing options from zero to 50. And this is because Codemasters have given us the ability to basically choose our own wing package for certain tracks. Long story short, on the previous games, 11-11 wings at Monaco would be completely different to 11-11 wings at Hungary or Zandvoort, for example. And that's because the game had preset packages, aka different types of wings for different tracks. Notice how the rear wing at Monza for most teams in real life is different to the one they use at Monaco. That's exactly what I mean. So on this year's game, Codemasters have basically scrapped the idea and have given us the ability to have more options with our wing setups and just general other options. Lastly, the tires have also been reworked so that locking up costs you a lot more because you will lose a lot more grip. The car feel a lot more natural in wet conditions. The tires are definitely having a lot of wheel spin. I'm definitely feeling it, but the grip, the grip levels is just really nice. On F1 2021, when it's raining, intermediate, so full wet tires feel like they have no grip it feels like you're basically racing on ice but right now it actually feels like you're racing in wet weather the main difference is you just brake a lot earlier because there's there is less grip but it doesn't feel as if you're driving on ice it generally does feel as if the car is attached to the road and it's also possible to lose speed on long flat out corners like turn three at spain for example due to scrubbing and not opening up the car quick enough we also have the new graphical layouts that's been added to this build of the game giving us a more 2022 feeling of course and it seems that all the cars have been added to the full release of the game that you guys will get your hands on instead of just using the multiplayer car or the fom car that they reskin. I will have some more F122 content coming up over the next week or two leading up to the full release of the game. But for now, you can click any of the other F122 videos that I've made so far on the screen right now. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.